Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sebastian River Area Chamber of Commerce Candidates Forum. I'm Teresa Toll. I'm on our Bay Street Pharmacy here in Sebastian, and I'm Vice Chair of the Chamber and also Chair of the Legislative and Government Affairs Committee for the Chamber. Before we get started tonight, I'd like to invite Girl Scout Troop 5003 of Sebastian to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. This is the yellow paddle 
This means you have 30 seconds left in which to answer the question or finish your response. Yellow means caution and be prepared to stop. When you observe Ms. Toll raising the red paddle, this means like a stoplight that you must stop because you're out of time. Now that the sequence has been randomly determined and you've met the timekeeper, please allow me the opportunity to review the rules and procedure that will be followed in this forum. There will be four separate portions to tonight's forum. The first portion is the opening statements segment. The second portion of tonight's forum will be a random set of six questions. The third uh, portion of tonight's forum will be identical character questions. And the fourth and last segment will be a closing statements segment. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail of those rules at this point. I wanted to give you an overview. The first portion of the forum is for opening statements from each candidate. Each opening statement may not exceed two minutes. Typically, most candidates use their opening statement to introduce themselves to the voters and to the viewing public. The first opening statement will be from candidate number one, Ms. Miller, who selected the number one out of the envelope. And we will progress sequ sequentially through all the candidates until we reach number six, who is Mr. Wright. After the opening statement segment is concluded, the next segment will involve each candidate receiving six randomly assigned questions. Each candidate will have one minute to answer each of the six questions. The first, six, uh, first set of six questions will be directed to Ms. Miller. The sets of questions will progress sequentially through all the remaining candidates until reaching candidate number six, Mr. Wright. The sets of six questions are not identical, but may be similar. You may take notes concerning the questions asked to other candidates and the other candidates' responses to those questions and to the issues that are raised. Each candidate will have a later opportunity to comment or clarify on the subject matter or issues raised in those questions directed to the other candidates. The third section or portion of tonight's forum, all candidates will have the opportunity to answer two identical questions. The two identical questions will be the same for every candidate and they are going to uh, be based on character. In the last segment of tonight's forum, each candidate will have the opportunity to make a closing statement. Each closing statement may not exceed two minutes. Typically, most candidates use their closing statement to summarize their position on issues of concern to voters or to the functioning of the city of Sebastian government. The first closing statement will be from Ms. Miller, candidate number one. The closing statements will progress sequentially throughout all the candidates until reaching candidate number six, Mr. Wright. Are there any questions on my presentation of the rules and the procedure that we're going to follow? Just to make sure I heard correctly, the six questions in between are one minute responses. Is that correct? That's correct, Ms. McCoy. Thank you. The uh, opening statements and closing statements are two minutes each. Everything else in the middle is a one minute apiece. In the character questions? One minute each. And those are only two questions. Thank you. Any other questions before we begin? All right. Questions, sir. Speak now or forever hold your peace. On the random set of six, then you said candidates could have something to clarify. How long are you anticipating that? If you want to clarify, you need to use your closing statement to do so, and that will be the two minute. Any other questions? All right, let's begin with our first segment, which is the opening statement segment. Uh, again, each candidate will be allowed two minutes to make an opening statement. Ms. Miller, are you ready? I'm ready. Please proceed. <laughs> thank you. I'd just like to thank the Chamber for having us here this evening. This is a great opportunity for everybody to get to know all the candidates. Uh, my name is Amber Miller. I'm a native Texan. 
I moved out here in 2003 after I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Texas at Arlington. I've lived in the Sebastian area, uh, actual city, since 2005 after we um, survived the two hurricanes, building a house, and um, went back to school and got my master's in physical therapy after teaching at Sebastian River Middle School for three years. And now I'm a physical therapist at an outpatient clinic here in town. I have one son. He just turned, he'll be 13 months old tomorrow, so a little over a year now. I've been married for eight years, and I'm just looking forward to providing any and all information that I can and answer your questions to the best of my ability. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Uh, candidate number two, David. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. It makes this easy to remember. Uh, thank you, the Chamber, for having me. Uh, I moved here in 2001 for a better way of life. I'm a local residential contractor here in Sebastian, in the neighborhood of the county. I have uh, two sons. One's a uh, freshman in Gainesville, and one's a senior in USF. So we're a house divided. It's a little tough to vote for either one. Um, we, uh, we moved here because we wanted our kids to have a better way of life. We came out of the Northeast. We didn't like that rat race anymore. We didn't like the cold weather, which most people move here to do. Um, I'm running for office because I think we need some new viewpoints, new, new thinking, new blood on the, uh, on the dais. And I've run before unsuccessfully. But um, I, I think that it's time for change in, in the city of Sebastian. Um, Mr. Wolf is stepping down, so there is an open seat. And there's an opportunity for at least one new person to get on there. But I'm hoping maybe we can put three new people on there. So thank you for your support. Thank you, Mr. D. Virgilio. Uh, candidate number three, Ms. Coy. Thank you. Um, Andrea Coy, I've lived in Sebastian for 14 years. Chamber, thank you, too, for this forum. Um, why did I come to Sebastian? Same reason everybody else did. Uh, 40 years ago, 40 plus years ago, my parents came here. Uh, my father came specifically because he loved the area and he was a snowbird. And we came every year after that. And when I retired from the military, I came, I had a choice, upstate New York or Sebastian. How difficult is that decision? Uh, and I've always loved the area. I have a master's degree from Penn State in education. I am currently uh, teaching English as a second language for um, Indian River State College, and I've been doing that for 11 years. I love my job, um, and I love serving on city council. Just a correction to my introduction, which was lovely, but this I'm running for my fourth term on council. Um, so I am certifiably nuts. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, my promises to folks who started asking me as long as a year ago, will you run again? My promise to them was as long as I was healthy and as long as I still enjoyed what I'm doing. And that clearly, uh, my health, thank you, is very good. And I do still enjoy serving on council. Um, I got involved in politics. Uh, like many people, because of an issue in my backyard. And it was an issue with Ashbury and dealt with environmental issues. And I started out as grassroots. I am now proud to say that I have built successful relationships with not just those original grassroots people, but many other organizations. Um, I'm really proud that the Realtors Association sponsored me in my time as up. Very well done, Ms. Coy. I appreciate that. Zip. <laughs> Candidate number four, Mr. McPartland. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for sponsoring this forum. My name is Bob McPartland, and I'm running for the Sebastian City Council. I come to Sebastian via Brooklyn, New York. That was where I was born and raised. You know? And I served in the United States Army, and I did my four years in the Explosive Warnings Disposal Unit and I got out to start my college career. I started my college career, and then first Desert Storm came along, and I volunteered for that. To take a break from school, but also to serve my country. When the war was over, I got out, and I finished, graduated from the University of Albany with a degree in political science and English. 
I moved to Sebastian in 2000. I have five children now. I love Sebastian. And in 2001, I started my career with the Department of Children and Families as a child protective investigator and investigating all types of abuse and neglect for vulnerable children in, our, in the state of Florida. I rose through the ranks, becoming a supervisor of a unit in Brevard County that handles the worst of the worst child abuse cases. And after serving there for a period of time, I was promoted for down here in the four counties, the Treasure Coast and Okeechobee counties, as the program administrator for child protective investigations, and I lead 40 plus investigators. The reason that I'm running for the Sebastian City Council is I think I, my experience of working for the department can help set the direction for the city of Sebastian in a positive light. And through my strength based leadership, I think I would be an asset to the council as well as the citizens of Sebastian. Thank you, Mr. McPartland. Candidate number five, Mr. Gilliams. Thank you very much. <clears throat> My name is Damian Gilliams. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Chamber, Teresa, Donna, Beth, for putting this on. Uh, I've been a resident of the city of Sebastian for 25 years. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Bonnie, uh, for 25 years. I have three beautiful kids. Damian Jr. is now in UF, uh, second year engineering. He was an IB top 10 in his class. My daughter Casey is graduating IB. She's going to be leaving the family soon, this year. She's going to be going to medical school. And I have a third one in Giffen Middle School. I uh, want to make sure tonight I get a chance to express why I should be the uh, candidate to, that gets elected to this position. Um, I want to contrast the views, the issues. Um, First thing I want everybody to go to my website, DamianLovesSebastian.com. My platform is there, it spells it all out. It's my contract and my agreement to this community. It's in writing. And uh, if you want to contact me, all my numbers are there. The most important thing that I, I want to discuss is my background and what I've been doing here in the community for at least the last 10 years. My background is in broadcasting, real estate, construction. Uh, I've also, uh, have background in marina business, I'm a waterfront. Uh, my goals, uh, when I do get elected to council, is to bring transparency, which the two incumbents have not brought to the, to the dice, uh, put the credit, uh, the checkbook on the uh, internet. I think that's very important. Citizens Academy, get more volunteers into the community to help at City Hall because our biggest part of the budget is personnel. And third, economic development, Co-enforcement with all these vacant homes sitting vacant. We need to get our real estate uh, uh, assessments up, not down. And uh, the most, politics, most important thing is the work in waterfront, the biggest jewel of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Lastly, candidate number six, Mr. Wright. Thank you, and I also want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting on this forum and giving every candidate an opportunity to stay there background, position, and views. Um, I, I moved to Sebastian in 2000, uh, and you know, this has been my, my permanent home since then. Uh, my wife Beverly and I have been married 43 years, and we really love this city. Uh, and really that was what originally drove me to begin working on behalf of the city. Prior to my election two years ago, I spent over five years volunteering for different uh, committees. Uh, one of those committees was the Parks and Recreation Committee, which I was chairman of, and we helped develop some of the parks in Sebastian. I was also chairman of the Economic Development Committee for the Sebastian River Chamber of Commerce. I served on the Indian River County Economic Development Committee, and also the Indian River County Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Committee, the County Impact Fee Task Force, and Metropolitan Planning Organization Citizens Advisory Committee. So I spent a good deal of time before I decided to run for office getting to know many of the issues that the city faced and, and many of the issues faced by the residents of Sebastian. I think that background, uh, working as a volunteer, trying to help move the city along in those areas that become even more important 
with the current economy uh, have given me a great insight that can continue to help the city of Sebastian and the city of Sebastian residents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. And thank you, candidates. That concludes our first segment of tonight's forum. I'd like to now move to the second segment, which is the random sets of six questions. And candidate number one is Ms. Miller. Are you ready, Ms. Miller? Okay. Question number one. Please describe any experience you may have in hiring, supervising, or disciplining employees. As a physical therapist, I am responsible for training and sometimes hiring, not usually, um, people that are either licensed differently or unlicensed personnel, which basically means I have to take upon the role of um, kind of a managerial role, I guess you could call it, um, for people such as physical therapist assistants, rehab techs, even some um, nurses aides and things of that nature. And Basically, what I am responsible for doing is training them with what I feel they're capable of, and then they work under my license with whatever task it is that I've given them. So if something goes wrong, I'm not only you know holding them responsible, but I'm also it's also my license; it's on the line. So I have a lot of experience with the supervision end of things and needing to um, politely excuse people when their job doesn't quite um, come up to snuff, so to speak. Thank you. Your question number two. In business, a financial statement includes revenue and expense information. Please list the different sources of revenue that the city receives. I actually made some notes, so I wouldn't forget what to um, what to say, and of course I don't have it in front of me. And that looks badly upon me, I apologize. Um, we get revenue, oh, it's right here in front of me, last place you look. Um, we have revenue from the ad valorem taxes, which is also the property value taxes, um, utility services taxes, communication and franchise taxes and fees, discretionary sales tax, which can't be changed until 2019, um, local option gas tax, half cent sales tax, permit fees, and then our stormwater assessment fees every year. Thank you. That was very efficiently done. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you found your notes. Question number three. Please describe the CRA, define its purpose, funding source, and mission. The original purpose, and I'm pretty sure it's the same purpose, um, of the CRA was a means to ensure that the downtown and surrounding areas kind of form a cohesive um, look, feel, community vision, and encourage reinvestment in the businesses that are within the CRA. What was the other part? That was the purpose. The funding source and mission. Okay. Um, they get funding from a variety of sources. There's CRA tax increment revenue, which comes partly from the city partly from the county. State of Florida has four different grants, historic matching grants, parks and recreation, forestry, waterway improvement grants, and then the city of Sebastian also has some grants that can be taken um, uh, advantage of the community development block grants. There are special assist taxes, general fund reserves, um, water and sewer funds, certain bonds, and gas taxes, and then some nonprofits can take advantage of the benches and bricks that are for sale. It, it, remember, we have viewers that may not be able to hear. I, I guess so I apologize. I realized I, I heard the timer, so I was waiting it's, for a red sign. It, it's okay for you to go ahead and finish your thought. Okay. <laughs> and it, so at least it's audible so that right. viewers can, can hear it. Sure. Okay, your question number four. Why do you want to be a city council member? Um, originally, my motivation was just for my son so that I could provide a better future, that sounds so cliche. And in doing this campaign, I found that it's not only for him, but for the entire family of Sebastian, whether it be young, old, middle-aged, whatever. Um, I, I want to encourage citizen involvement in or, um, venues like this, um, city council meetings, uh, 
committee meetings, whatever it may be, I, I'd like to see some more support for small businesses, whether it be incentives or you know, help out somehow. And that has, you know, so my, my initial motivation has kind of evolved where it's still that same basic premise of, you know, providing a better future, um, but it's kind of evolved since then. Thank you. Question number five. How would you define going green and how should Sebastian address this issue? Um, to me, going green is doing the best I can with the resources I have and trying to preserve my way of life without damaging those resources, whether it be encouraging recycling through the community, with businesses, or with individuals, whether it be encouraging, you know, building contractors to use certain grades of materials that are better rated for, you know, the weather or, you know, solar issues and things like that. Um, but to me, going green is definitely a, a personal issue for each individual person and it's a little bit different maybe for me than it is for anybody else. But basically, being the best steward that I can with the resources I've been given. Okay, thank you. Your last question, question number six. Are you familiar with the comprehensive plan of the city? And do you have any suggestions on how it should be modified? I'm familiar with it to a certain extent. I, I don't really have any modifications that I would make right now without seeing the entire thing right in front of me. It's, it's like saying, what are you going to cut out of the budget without having the whole thing right in front of you? I would really have to scrutinize it um, to decide what may or may not be appropriate at a given time may um, change you know the initial plan may have been decided that they're going to you know review it every three to five years or so and then you know it actually needs to be reviewed every year because the needs of the, the community changes or the attitudes of the citizens change and i think based on whatever the circumstances are at that time would allow me to say whether or not I would modify it. Okay, thank you. Candidate number two, Mr. Dean Virgilio. Question number one. What do you think is the role of a city council member? Um, city council member is here to guide staff in the direction they feel is best interest for the city. Uh, being a five member staff up here, we may have differences of opinion, we may have opinions. But I think the idea of it is, is we come to a community uh, agreement and we guide staff and let staff do their job, not interfere with staff's job and hold staff back from being all they can be. So I think our, our job is to enforce sometimes what staff wants or guide them in the direction that we think that the community wants to go. Thank you. Thank you. Your question number two. What do you feel is the biggest weakness in the current city council that you hope to change by being elected? I think the lack of independent votes. I'm, I'm sorry? The lack of independent voting. I think too many people go along with the bride instead of look for an outside opinion. Unfortunately, Mr. Wolf was one of the few people that put an outside opinion in there and he's leaving. Um, it's unfortunate that he's leaving, but I think he feels and I feel that you know, two terms is enough on city council. If I'm elected, I shouldn't be here for more than two terms either. Thank you. Thank you. Your question number three. Do you have any ideas on how to increase revenue without increasing taxes? Uh, let's see. I think we need to look into ways that we don't attack business we don't attack the people's revenues. Um, to bring, one, we'd have to bring more business into the city. Um, because the tax revenue through small businesses, and that's what we're not going after small business. We have the tax abatement. It's designed for big business. We need to, our, our community is based on mom and pop organizations. I'm a small business. Other people in the community have small businesses. We need to attract more small business which will help bring in more tax revenue, which will bring in more small employees, maybe five or five employees to each one. 
So I think if we can make it a little easier for these small businesses to come in and cut the red tape in our growth management department and allow small businesses to come in, I think we can generate more revenue and not have to worry about raising taxes. And since you brought it up, <laughs> question number four. <laughs> what kind of financial incentives should the city provide to promote the creation of new jobs and business expansion? Well, unfortunately, we're strapped by the, the impact fees. A lot of businesses that I know were trying to expand their business. We had a pizza place on, on 512, wanted to put a bigger, um, they wanted to put a bigger restaurant area in their restaurant. Um, they wanted $60,000 for impact fees. He, he wasn't impacting the community in any way, but the, the county and the city imparts $60,000 impact fees. There was another business that wanted to add 10 doctors offices north of the hospital. It's outside of Sebastian, but they wanted $400,000 in impact fees. Unless we can cut these impact fees down and do something, you can't attract new businesses to the city. And that's a major problem. Thank you. Question five. Do you have any experience in problem solving or consensus building with other people? And can you explain these processes? Well, as I said, I'm a, uh, a residential contractor. I deal with plumbers, um, electricians, coordinating everybody so everything works in the streamline so nobody's tripping over each other. Um, I've had, I've supervised employees in the past where I had to let them go for non-performance. Uh, I've hired people before and it's just part of my business that I do every day. I just constantly are organizing people so people don't trip over each other and we streamline our process so things move smoother. Thank you. Your last question. What changes would you make to the city's CRA master plan? It's tough because uh, it's funny, I was in the Sarasota area and on the west coast, and you go down their business districts have a cohesive look to them. You know, you it's hard to implement us to become a little fishing village down in the CRA district when you can't make everybody change their facades to suit a certain motif. I think if we come out with new buildings that come in here or new renovations, I think a, an old fishing village motif would look pretty neat to, to match our working waterfront so we stay cohesive down there so it doesn't look like a hodgepodge of different uh, different buildings is what I really think that you know we should really implement and enforce. And I think we should really look into put more parking down there along the river drive so businesses can come in and allow them to park and utilize the public parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. D. Virgilio. Candidate number three, Ms. Coy. I'm ready. Okay, question one. If elected, what project or goal do you have in mind that you would like to see accomplished within the first year of your term? Oh my. Primarily, keeping our ship afloat. That's, that's the primary issue, and I think for me to to, to state that I would like to build this or get working on that, though I do want to see us think about a community center and things like that, keeping the ship afloat without raising taxes, keeping our, our uh, staff busy and occupied and, and earning their keep without having to reduce services to the community is the most important challenge we have. Uh, everybody has no money. And rather than raise taxes, we need to just look very carefully at how we're doing business and to survive for the next couple of years. So for me to speak of projects, we can all dream. And I don't, I want to continue to dream. Can't stop dreaming. Got to have be ready when the money starts coming back in. But just surviving and staying afloat is the goal. Thank you. Question number two, should the city support special events that are organized by nonprofit, volunteer-driven organizations, and if so, how? Absolutely. Uh, this is an easy question for me because we sponsor several. We have the Fine Arts Festival that's coming up uh, in February, January. Uh, Clam Bay, first weekend in November, sponsored by nonprofits. Uh, phenomenal events that bring thousands and thousands of people into our area as tourists, day trippers who come here. 
Uh, it's good exposure for the city. It costs very, very little money uh, for us to participate in this. It is not a waste. It's tourism at its finest. It's volunteers at the clam bake. Hundreds, many people sitting in this audience and listening out there, hundreds of people come and make it successful. So why not? It's pretty inexpensive and it's worked. No problem. I support it 100%. Thank you. Question number three. What do you think is the most significant challenge to the business community of Sebastian and how can the city help? Uh, almost the same answer as question number one. The businesses have to stay afloat. And how can Sebastian help? Well, we have facade sign and landscape grants to help them have better signage. We we have a new economic development director who's available to assist with their needs. We have Indian River State College providing a mentor for free for new businesses and current businesses to help them get off the ground. And we provide them space. So aside from issuing a check to keep them going, which we can't do, I think Sebastian is open we, don't, we know we need business, otherwise taxes will have to go up. So I think Sebastian has made it very clear that we are open for business and we are open to business, new and old. Thank you. Question number four. As budgets tighten, there often exists a will to consider new avenues for services. Do you favor privatization of certain services and products and in what areas do you think privatization would be appropriate? We just got done talking about that this morning with the union reps who were interviewing all of us today. And what would you privatize and what would you merge and, and all of that. You know, let's look at the counties. Let, let, let's go to the uh, landfill. And the county privatized that. And even though it doesn't belong to Sebastian, we get the calls on council. They were nasty to me, or they weren't open. Nobody will help me with my stuff anymore. And it was a loss to our citizens. Before I would consider privatizing anything or giving a service to the county, for example, the building department, linking it to uh, the county services, or the police department, linking it to the sheriff's department, or going backwards in time when 911 dispatchers, we went to 911 in Vero Beach before we finally got the call dispatched here. I would do anything to prevent that from happening because the services we have are very, very good. So I'd like to see it stay. I'm not in favor of privatizing. Thank you. Question number five. Can you explain the difference between a strong mayor form of government and a city manager form of government? Which works best and why? Well, many years ago, yes, I can to answer your question. I can explain that question. And in the city of Sebastian, as with all of the municipalities in Indian River County and our neighboring counties, we have, uh, most of them, we have uh, a, a strong, we don't have a strong mayor. We have a city manager form of government. Many years ago, we did have the strong mayor. What's a strong mayor? You vote for the mayor of the city of Sebastian. You pick one person out there uh, for X number of years, I think it was still two years, and you vote them in as mayor, and they're the boss. They are the expert. Uh, everything else, uh, they have more power than uh, the rest of staff and, and more say so. We, years ago, went to a council form of government. We had a city manager, and I'm proud to say I was one of the people who hired Al Minner back in 2005. I think we made an excellent pick. He's in charge. We're the supervisors. We are in charge of three charter officers. That's it. Thank you. Question number six. How do you feel about the recent restructuring of the city's departments and unpaid furlough days for city employees? And how do you think it will impact services to the community? 
we're already seeing some of that impact. And the public may not be noticing quite as much, but I'm seeing a loss in service. And we're to the critical point. We can't be asking people to do more with less. Bless their hearts, the unions have done a good job in their negotiations so that we can get through the next couple of years. We've made a great agreement with them. Their furlough days, they're taking hits. We can't ask them to take any more hits. They're doing more with less. They, uh, they're having trouble, just like everybody in the community, paying their bills and going to the doctor and paying them for their prescriptions. So, uh, gosh, you know, I forgot the original question. It just went out of my brain. That's okay, I only have like two seconds. So I, I, I think I'll, I'll end there. And uh, was that question number six? That was question number six. And, and I'm so grateful. That I want to thank the chamber for not making me follow cerebral Don Wright. <laughs> was the luck of the draw. Thank you. It, it was a random selection again. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that because of the alphabet, we wind up alphabetically sometimes. This was nice. Thank you. Uh, candidate number four, Mr. McPartland. Are you ready, sir? I hope so. It's kind of like a game of Russian roulette. And I think Amber did well going first, but then while you're sitting here waiting for your turn, it's a little hectic, so fire away. I understand. <coughs> Question number one. Please provide a list of priority issues that you feel the city should focus on. Priority issues that the city should focus on. I think first and foremost are low, lower taxes, keeping the taxes low, because that will help at least, I mean, property values may continue to go down, but if you're raising taxes, I don't think the property values go further down. So I think keeping the taxes at a minimum and low, uh, the quality of service that is going on, I mean, I've noticed, like Ms. Coy mentioned, that uh, the workers are doing more with less. We're all doing more with less. And I think the quality of services are still there. I think the police department is functioning well. The parks are very clean. Anywhere you go down along the riverfront is staying. I think we're getting the best bang for our buck. So keeping taxes low, quality of service, maintaining property values as best we can. Thank you. Question number two. What issues motivated you to run for office? And what do you plan to accomplish during, during your term? What motivated me to run for office? What issues motivated you to run for office? The issues that motivated me to run for office. I don't know if there's any particular issues that have motivated me. I, you know, some people may think I live in a fairy world or a dream world, but I kind of believe that you can make the best in your little corner of the world. And that's what I try to do through my job. And I live in Sebastian. And I think I can make Sebastian a better place for everybody who's here. And I like to believe that I will work in the best interests of the citizens of Sebastian. And just keeping this place as pristine as it is, looking forward, I would like to see it, you know, the best it can be, the beautification projects that are going on along 512, the phenomenal work that's being done along the riverfront, I want to be a part of that and setting it up for the future so it maintains the quality of life. And I want to retire here. I want my kids to stay here. I want them to work here so I don't have to go halfway across the country to see them. So, this is one more thing. Thank you. Question three. What city ordinances would you like to see reviewed or revised? And tell us why. City ordinances that are like reviewed or revised. I mean, I guess the ones I would like to see is as far as code enforcement on the abandoned properties that are out there. I would like to see them, you know, fully enforced. Going after, you know, I see on my street I have two basically abandoned homes, and I know the grass gets cut every couple of months, but I'm hoping that. You know, fines are being levied and hopefully collected. But that would be the, the main one is enforcement of the existing ordinances concerning abandoned homes or, you know, property owners that are not here. Thank you. Your question number four. The city's CRA district was originally
originally created in 1995. Are you satisfied with the redevelopment efforts to date? And what further improvements would you like to see the city accomplish? I think the CRA, it's the formation of it. I mean, it, it was wonderful. See, I like to think in simplistic terms. And I look at the CRA, it goes back to like the old movie Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. And the CRA, by the money that's raised down there through the taxes and that's matched by, by the county, is used to enhance that district down there through the, the facade, sign, and landscaping is one aspect that they can apply through CRA grants businesses down there. They put up 20%, they get 80% through the grant. I think it's a, a wonderful initiative and just hopefully more of the same will be able to continue because I know as everybody's doing more with less, hopefully the county will continue to be able to match those dollars down there. Thank you. Question number five. How should the city manage its resources to ensure the safety of the community? City manages resources to ensure the safety of the community. Yes, sir. Safety. Safety of the community. Okay. I know they're doing the best they can. The chief leads the police department and does an exceptional job. I safety of the citizens is number one. I know lately something that's happened, you know, you see, like I mentioned about abandoned properties, is there have been going, you know, thefts in some of those properties. Hopefully those are being monitored through, I know they utilize some volunteer officers to go looking at some of those properties, because you know, coming from New York, I would hope there's no squatters ultimately that are down there, or also the vandalization of those properties, the theft of aluminum and copper there. I can see is that potentially, you know, having the wrong element. But the services that they have as far as the police force, I think they monitor the streets. They do an exceptional job with the resources that they have. Thank you. Your last question, Mr. McPartland. Number six, do you have any ideas on how the city's economic development plan should be implemented? The economic development plan, I mean, it's, it's basically all written down there and it's comprehensive as far as the targeted industries that and, you know, they went off and they, you know, the city of Sebastian, we put the tax abatement on our referendum, we were the first. We set the tone before the county put theirs out there. I think the most important part is we have hired the economic development coordinator, Mr. Joe Griffin. I think he's very talented. I think the council needs to define his role, what his responsibilities are in that capacity. And I think his role needs to be defined and I think even amended and put in the comprehensive plan for the future. And just let him take charge and know what his tasks are, what his responsibilities are, so he can get out and start implementing the economic development plan for Sebastian. Thank you, Mr. McPartland. Moving now to candidate number five, Mr. Gilliams. Are you ready for your first question, sir? Yes, sir. Question number one. What are the three most important traits or talents you feel are necessary for a city manager to be effective in implementing council policies? Three most important traits or talents in a city manager. Um, communications, to be able to communicate uh, uh, with each member, uh, which he does pretty well. Um, setting goals and uh, being able to uh, look back at those goals to see that he's performing. Um, and third, uh, being able to get along with all the council members and uh, communicating uh, uh, their policies uh, uh, properly and, and, and taking them out to keep them accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Number two. Is there anything that you would like to change in the business district? Yes. Uh, the uh, first of all, um, the business district for 
Sebastian, a lot of it is on US-1, it's in the CRA district. And uh, there was a lot of opportunity that was missed uh, when um, people want, the, the businesses down there came in and they wanted to get signed and uh, landscaping grants from the uh, CRA uh, board. Uh, there was opportunity to match up with SBA loans where those dollars could have went further. And um, uh, that, I think, is very important because with businesses, they create the jobs. The other thing is the, the, the roads. For two years now, uh, they've been dilapidated. They show poorly. The landscaping along Indian River Drive is not up to par, and that's our crown jewel. So that and that particular business district, along County Road 512, on that district, in that zone, you know, coming off of I-95, zero scaping, a lot of beautiful palm trees, welcoming people to the community, but yet not a lot of maintenance where it requires our city employees to follow up on this money because you know, they don't get paid as much anymore. Thank you. Number three, in your role as a city council member, what do you think your biggest contribution will be to this community? Well, uh, my uh, commitment, number one, I've been coming to the meetings for the past 10 years, and I want to serve my community. Uh, my background, uh, I've been the chair, chairman of the Code Enforcement Board. I've been on that board for six years. I ran those meetings properly. My background in real estate development, I can read site plans properly, I can read set of plans properly, so that when there's a, uh, a hearing on an appeal coming from the planning and zoning, that uh, somebody's up here that can uh, read the landscaping and engineering. Um, my background in the marina business and the uh, boating business, being that we have a riverfront district. Uh, I have a background in broadcasting to promote the city, so I can bring a lot to the table. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Question number four. What are the issues and projects that the city of Sebastian and the city of Felsmere have in common, and how should they work together on those issues? Well, the, uh, when you say projects in the city of Felsmere and Sebastian, um, I can't, uh, I can't really think of any except when we uh, argue what land we're going to annex next. If they're going to annex, you know, a thousand acres or so that's going right to grab whatever's on 512. Uh, I've got to give the city of Felsmere a lot of credit. They, uh, uh, they've consolidated their uh, growth management department. They, they uh, privatize and they do their engineering outsource. Um, they're bringing in a trail that's, they just got financed uh, some money from the county, grant money make that happen. Um, what sticks out most is when the Chamber of Commerce uh, represents the city of Bellsman, you know, yet they're on our property in Sebastian and, and they work very well with, you know, going out there and promoting Felsmere. But I don't see any pro projects that the, the city of Sebastian and Felsmere work together on. And they should. There's, there's a lot of things that can be talked about, especially with their fishing, our waterfront, and working together as a joint venture for uh, fundraisers. There's a lot of opportunity there. Okay, thank you. Number five, should the city establish a separate CRA advisory committee? If so, what type of qualifications should committee members have? Well, the, uh, we had a separate CRA committee at one time. It was too large and nothing could get accomplished. So the council decided that uh, uh, they would take that role back and they would wear that hat and handle the budget and the uh, expenses of uh, those funds. Me personally, I feel that uh, uh, there should be a committee. It should be made up of the business people and the residents in that CRA district. Uh, they should be knowledgeable on the uh, codes. They should be knowledgeable on different aspects on what makes a CRA work, redevelopment, how to fund it. Uh, there are CRA districts all over the state of Florida that are doing fabulous, and we've been kind of stuck in a, uh, uh, a boondoggle, if I may say, with our working waterfront. We're not moving forward with that uh, to the extent where everybody benefits, just a few are. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Your last question, number six. The county recently revised its landscaping ordinance to be more business friendly. Would you be in favor of the city reviewing its landscaping code? And if so, why? If not, 
why not? I would be against it. Uh, I think it's important that uh, uh, landscaping uh, in the business district sets the tone for uh, uh, development. Uh, if you want your real estate values to go up, people should maintain their properties with nice landscaping. Um, I think that uh, if you uh, do not have good landscaping, uh, just just go look at Walmart. That's a prime example. Uh, that place should be buffered with plenty of landscaping so that you don't have to see a big box building. Uh, so when you have big box developments that come in, they, out of all the other developments, they should be required to put extra landscaping in so that the people come through, you see a sign that says Walmart, you know where Walmart is, but you don't have to look at that, uh, that sign. To me, it's offensive. So I would be big on landscaping. Zero escaping if possible. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes uh, Mr. Gilliam's questions. We're moving now to the last but not least, candidate number six, Mr. Wright. Are you ready for question number one, sir? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. To create a balanced budget for the city, what services would you reduce or taxes would you increase? Well, the, uh, we just finished uh, budget negotiations and, and have a balanced budget as we're required to every year. Uh, I mean, this year, in order to achieve that, there were a couple of retirements in the police department and there was a reorganization at City Hall. Uh, we are now at a point where we are getting about as far down in the services and people that provide those services that we possibly can. So, I mean, that would have to be looked at very carefully. Uh, the police department is 1.5, 1.7 uh, officers per 1,000 employees. We have to be very careful. We may have to increase the number of people there, and that needs to be monitored very carefully. Uh, on the city staff side, we really don't have much room to cut. So, the uh, other side of the equation it would be to consider an increase in number. Thank you. Question number two. Why are you the right person to address the difficult economic challenges that face the city? Uh, I have uh, 30 years experience in the corporate world. Uh, the last 10 of that I was president of a company that had 100 employees and was in the insurance and risk management business. But these were 100 salaried employees, not commissioned salesmen. So I've had a lot of experience balancing budgets, uh, a very strong financial background. And this uh, work on budgeting, work on accounting and finance is really critical to looking at all the different issues that we have going forward. So I think it's my, my business background, in addition to owning a couple of businesses of my own, giving me the experience necessary to help the city. Thank you, sir. Question number three, are you familiar with the Working Waterfront Program and how do you think it will impact the city of Sebastian? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the water, Working Waterfront Program. This project was set up to help our commercial fishermen uh, increase tourism and to increase uh, the presence of Sebastian uh, as an attraction, uh, bringing people into the city. Uh, I think that over time, it will achieve those goals. I think we are already helping uh, the commercial fishing uh, people there. If we had not purchased that property, it's very likely that a private group who may have uh, purchased it and changed the use of that facility, and they would not have docks or a place to go. So I think we've accomplished part of our objective. We have further objectives to go to, to incorporate and and get a smooth operation there so that we can go from fishing to retail fish sales to food sales and all of that needs to be tied together matching up with the overall plan that we had in mind when we started the project. Thank you. Your question number four. Indian River County has had the third highest unemployment rate in the state. Last month it was 13.9%.
How would you use your role as a city council member to create jobs in our area? All right, I'm already using that uh, role as a city council member as co-chairman of the North County Business Development Committee, which is a Chamber of Commerce committee. We meet monthly. Uh, this morning we were discussing what can the county do, what can the cities do to reduce unemployment and or promote growth. We have spent uh, a lot of time on those issues, and right now we've got <coughs> three major projects that we're looking at. But the first one is to look at how we can set up a marketing and promotional plan to, 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 to attract businesses to the area. And another project as respect to how we retain and allow businesses to expand. And another project to take to all the mayors in this area to discuss the negative impact of impact fees on growth in any River County. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Question number five. Indian River County has a high foreclosure rate on the Treasure Coast. How would you work to reduce the negative impacts on our neighborhoods and community because of empty and neglected homes? I think that we have uh, fallen a little bit behind in this area. I have read a number of stories about communities that have set up community organizations of residents to help take care of their own uh, problems in their own neighborhood, much like a local uh, police group to, for safety. That's one initiative that we could, we could start. Getting the banks involved is another initiative that, again, other communities are working on when there are foreclosure problems, when there are these issues, the financial burden can be shifted from the residents to the banks who are involved in foreclosing, and this takes some ordinance change uh, by the city to accomplish this. This plus pride in the community, we already do some limited work, but we could probably do some more, and it's an issue that we've discussed and we need to continue to discuss in Savannah. Thank you, sir. Your last question, question number six. Please explain how you would actively control employee benefit costs, <clears throat> excuse me, such as pensions, deferred compensation, and health care. All right, well, first of all, the um, city council guides the city manager in all of these negotiations. So our active control is really through the organization structure that we live with. But we've just gone through negotiations with the two unions, one being the police union, and the other being the public employee unions, which include pension negotiations. So on an annual basis, those contracts come up for review, and part of the compensation package to the union employees are the pension benefits. What would really be a nice thing to see happen is instead of the very poor returns that are achieved today, and pensions, and one of the reasons they're getting so expensive is the returns are so bad because interest rates and the return on investments are so low, so you have to fill that up with cash. If, we, if there could be some improvement in the economic picture nationally, the returns on those investments would go up and the burden would be reduced. Thank you very much, Mr. Reed. That now concludes our second portion of our candidates forum. We're now going to go into the third segment in which each candidate will receive two identical character questions. And we're going to go in reverse this time, start with candidate number six and go backwards. Would you like me to change that, Ms. Miller? <laughs> you, want, you want to go first again? <laughs> All right, Mr. Wright, are you ready? Yes. Question number one, please describe your community involvement including volunteer work, not-for-profit involvement, membership and service organizations, and et cetera. Okay, it's, it's a pretty long list, uh, but obviously- You only have one minute. I understand <laughs> that, so, so I'll try to go back. Uh, Indian River County Chamber of Commerce, uh, Economic Development Committee, the Indian River County Economic Development Committee, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, chairman of the Parks and Recreation and, and service, of course, on the Parks and Recreation Committee for a number of years. 
I served on the Impact Fee Task Force at the county level. And then prior to living in Sebastian, I uh, spent many, many years coaching soccer in New Jersey and was president of an organization that provided uh, soccer services for over 600 children aged from 4 to 18. So my uh, community service was extended not just into Sebastian, but over my career. Thank you very much. Your second question, please describe a circumstance in your life in which you may have been less than honest and what lessons have you learned from it? Uh, and that, that, to me, is a, is a very difficult question. Uh, I really don't have uh, a situation that I could outline that uh, meets those parameters. Uh, you know, they're going back to my childhood where, you know, as kids you tell, you know, white lies or something like that. And the one thing you do learn is if you do tell the truth, it's a lot easier to just talk about a subject the next time you speak about it because you don't have to remember all the lies you told the last time. But that would be a subject that would go back to the end of my being, um, you know, quite young. If it'll make it easier for you, uh, I will readily admit that when I was a young man, I stole a candy bar from a 7-Eleven and caught a great deal of grief from my parents about it. And I learned some valuable lessons for the rest of my life because of that. So it's not limited to anything of recent vintage, if there's anything that comes to your mind. Uh, you know, I think I stole a comic book one time, but uh, it was only worth a few pennies, so I'm not real worried about how that impacted me. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Candidate number five, Mr. Gilliams. Question number one. Please describe your community involvement, including volunteer work, not-for-profit involvement, and membership and service organizations. I um, was on the exchange at the club. I was a coach for the Little League. I sponsored the Little League team. I served the uh, Code Enforcement Board. Uh, worked on the CRA Board. Also worked on the Working Waterfront Committee uh, back in the days. Uh, I don't have that many, but the ones that I do work on, I give it my full attention. I'd rather zero in and give quality than quantity. Thank you. Thank you. Question number two. Please describe a circumstance in your life in which you may, be, may have been less than honest, and what lessons have you learned from it? There was a time that uh, I was an orphan, and I was in a cottage with 16 other kids, and uh, I pulled the fire alarm because I didn't know I was playing around with it, and. Um, the fire department showed up and the counselor had all of us stand out in the hall to uh, see who would uh, any up and admit who did it. And I was reluctant because I was afraid of the uniform officers while they were there, but um, eventually I did fess up and took the punishment. Um, something that uh, I still didn't learn because when I went out to college to get the girls out of the dormitory, we would pull so, but <laughs> wrong answer. <laughs> You're supposed to learn something from it. But uh, actually, it was some of my college buddies. But anyway, uh, that was the experience that I've had. Thank you. Candidate number four, Mr. McPartland. Question number one Please describe your community involvement, including volunteer work, not for profit involvement, and membership and service organizations. Well, my community involvement was instilled in me a long time ago by my parents. And it started out as an older boy in Brooklyn who used to have to walk from 69th Street up to 83rd Street and 10 masks up there at St. Ephraim's. I mean, from there it went, my parents got me involved in collecting coins because my mother was behind starting the largest volunteer ambulance corps in Brooklyn, known as Bravo. From there it went, joined the United States Army. Then I volunteered for Desert Storm after I got out of the Army. From there, since I've been down in Florida, 
I've coached Little League. I've been involved in many things. I've volunteered for the U.S. Repatriation of Haiti. I've been involved in Human Trafficking Task Force. I'm on Model Dependency Redesign Board. Uh, the list goes on and on. PTA, chaperoning field trips, as well as not only is this month Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And on October 29th, I'm walking in a walk in her mild shoes, wearing four inch stilettos down at Indian River Medical Center if anybody wants to join me. Thank you. I'll pass, thank you. Okay, question number two, Mr. McPartland. Please describe the circumstance in your life in which you have been, may have been less than honest, and what lessons have you learned from it? Less than honest. I've taken a comic book, I've taken a candy bar when I was a very small child. But one thing that I can think of is as I started as a young investigator, is sometimes you don't have all the answers. And I had removed five children from their home, and they had asked me, is everything going to be all right, and are they going to be able to go home? And you know, I wanted to give them some hope, you know, try and take the pressure off myself. And I told them that yes, everything was going to be all right. And that someday they would go home. But what the oldest child heard me say was that everything was great and that he would be going home. And what I learned from that is that you have to be very clear in your language. It's so important. You need to mean what you say and say what you mean. And I'm very clear in my communication with people. And sometimes you want to give people hope, but you don't want to, you know, mislead them or just say something for your benefit. You know, tell them the truth. And if you don't know the answer, it's fine to say, I don't know, and then work on getting them the answer. Thank you, sir. Candidate number three is Corey. Question one. Please describe your community involvement, including volunteer work, not-for-profit involvement, membership in service organizations, and etc. Okay, thank you. Um, I forgot to mention in my introduction, I think, that I retired from the United States Army. Uh, 21 years, I'm a retired Master Sergeant. And during that time, I was always involved. They made us go out to the community. It became a habit. But since I've been in Sebastian for the past 14 years, proud to have been associated as the Vice President of SPOA, Sebastian Property Owners Association, along with Sal Naglia, and uh, have had a long-standing relationship with SPOA, uh, Senior Vice Commander of VFW Post Tension 10, uh, I'm a member of the American Legion, I'm uh, a relatively new member of the GFWC, which stands for the, can't say that, Great Federation of Women's Clubs. I have to be real careful. Uh, Great Federation of Women's Clubs, and I'm proud to be uh, a member and, and have worked with all of these people. They're service organizations. They're a part of, uh, of my being, and uh, I, I love to get out there and help. I volunteer at the Clam Bake three days. I'm the pizza queen. Come and get a piece of pizza. Perhaps we can clarify. You know that red song that I have. Thank you. Question number two. Please describe a circumstance in your life in which you may have been less than honest and what lessons have you learned from it? Okay, let's go back to the little kid experiences. I was with a friend of mine in the drugstore and uh, we decided we needed some makeup that we didn't have money to pay for and walked out with several things to take home. My father caught me and it wasn't a pleasant experience though I wasn't brutal honest. Uh, he made me take the items back and apologize to the owner. And I will never in my life forget how embarrassing that was to me, how disgraced I felt, how undignified. Uh, and I never went back into that store because I was too ashamed to run into the owner. I, I, I couldn't. That never left me. In the military, honesty and integrity, that's everything. Without honesty and integrity, you have nothing. And there's two kinds of honesty. Honesty in words and communication, that's being truthful 
and not being deceptive in what you say, and honesty in deeds. So these lessons have carried through. They have been my military career, and they are with me today as I sit on council. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to bring up the fact that I also did make up, but I thought it came over. Didn't want that out. No, correct. <laughs> Candidate number two, Mr. D. Virgilio. Please describe your community involvement, including volunteer work, not-for-profit involvement, membership in service organizations, and etc. Uh, I coached basketball in my youth. I've coached soccer here in Sebastian. I volunteered on the uh, Sebastian Soccer Association's uh, their concession stand that they're rehabbing because Pat uh, Revisio is very convincing. Um, I've done Habitat for Humanity work. I've, uh, I'm presently coaching the assistant coach of the lacrosse team at Sebastian River High School. I've done, uh, I've done numerous other uh, hurricane rehab work that was volunteer work. Thank you. Question number two. Please describe a circumstance in your life in which you may have been less than honest and what lessons have you learned from it? Well, if I did like it, that would be much easier, wouldn't it? Uh, actually, in my youth, I, uh, you know, like everybody else, you know, rebel rouse and do things that you shouldn't. And I remember my sister telling me one time how my mother was disappointed in the things I was doing in my life. And, uh, and that's pretty disheartening for a parent to find out that a parent is actually disappointed in you as a kid when I was like 17. And, uh, and ever since that, I kind of turned my life around and I stopped hanging with the people I was hanging and I, uh, I found that I should move forward in life instead of coasting along at the pace I was coasting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And number one, candidate number one. Ms. Miller, question one. Please describe your community involvement including volunteer work, not-for-profit involvement, membership in service organizations, et cetera. Thank you. Um, I am an active member of King's Baptist Church in Vero Beach and do various projects with them throughout the year. Um, I've also done numerous fundraisers for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation over the last few years being here in Sebastian. I even shaved my head three years ago. <laughs> Best experience ever. Everybody should try it. <clears throat> Um, I'm also a newer member of the Junior Women's Club, along with Andrea. I'm a member of the American Physical Therapy Association, and I'm the historian for their section on women's health. I'm also the vice chair of the local East Central District of the Florida Physical Therapy Association. It's our state chapter. And I'm one of the newer members of the Medical Reserve Corps, which is the group of people that's responsible for volunteering if there's a natural disaster or even with school screenings and things like that that are coming up soon. So. Thank you. Question number two. Please describe a circumstance in your life in which you may have been less than honest and what lessons have you learned from it? When I was in the seventh grade, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup, I go with makeup again, <laughs> until I was 13. I was, it was me and my sister, and so my parents were trying to raise, you know, children to be children and didn't want us to grow up too quickly. And I had first period gym, so she didn't know, my mom didn't know what clothes I took with me to school or what else I might have taken with me to school. And I had a chorus, second period, so I would get ready after, after gym and I would put on the makeup and then take it off before I went home. And that day my mom was volunteering in chorus. <laughs> and I'll never forget reaching down to put on lip gloss or whatever it was and looking up and my mom walked out of the office. And I learned that you never try to hide from authority or rules not because you know big brother is watching you but because the rules are there for a reason and i didn't get terribly punished or grounded or anything like that the fact that my mom caught me was punishment enough but i learned that they you know those rules are there to protect us whether it be at that age or older so I'll never forget thank you all right that concludes our third segment of tonight's forum we're now going into the home stretch the fourth segment is the closing statements segment. In this uh, segment, each of you will be allowed a maximum of two minutes to make a closing statement. You may use your closing statement to address or clarify any issue raised by any of the sets of randomly assigned questions 
or you may use the final statement as an opportunity to explain any other matter that is important to you or the voters or City of Sebastian government. The first candidate to make a closing statement will be Ms. Miller. Thank you. Um, again, thank you for having this forum this evening. This has been great. I love hearing the same responses from people, but also you know, hearing some different ideas. It's been really great. Um, first and foremost, I love Sebastian, and I love everything that it has to offer. I'm, you know, I'm not in this because I'm a politician, but I'm a real person with experience that I can bring to the table to offer a fresh and different perspective, regardless of the situation. I'm an educated, professional, family-minded woman, and I want to see more citizen involvement. I want to see better support for our businesses, and I want to see you know more families taking part in everything that Sebastian does have to offer. And I, I really, I think that most of the questions were answered to the to the best of everybody's abilities, and I don't really have any additional things to add, other than you know when you go to vote, just remember it's time for a Miller in office. Thank you. Candidate number two, Mr. D. Virgilio. Your closing statement, sir. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the Chamber for having us again. Um, there's been a lot of talk about economic development in the city. Um, the truth of the matter is we've lost more businesses than we've brought in. So our economic development plan that we've imposed is not doing very well. We have a working waterfront down on the riverfront, which is a great plan. I hope the, the future when we bring in the museum, the fisherman's pier gets finished. But right now, a lot of the businesses in the CRA district are upset. We brought a full restaurant into the city that wasn't supposed to be a full restaurant. This is what you're dealing with on the current city council, and that's why I'm hoping for a change. And I think me being a small business owner, know what the needs of the small business are in the city. I lived in the community for nine years, and I think I can bring a new perspective to the city council. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Candidate number three, Ms. Coy. That would be me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, real quickly, just a response to the working waterfront. The Sebastian uh, Council is dealing directly with that issue very promptly, uh, and the issue will be resolved by this current city council. We're the ones who were responsible for it, and we're going to solve the problem. We're already there. Um, Sebastian residents, on November 8th, you're going to vote for three city council members and on important charter issues. Please get out and vote and bring all your neighbors and your friends with you. It's very important. Once again this year, council was able to roll back your taxes, and I pledge once again to hold the line on future spending. Why should you vote for me? I've got the experience, and I've got the record to show. It's very easy to say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But folks, a council member is only as good as their ability to convince two or more other council members up here to vote for their issue. That's where I have the experience. That's where I have the leadership. That's where you won't hear me making empty promises that I know I can't keep. I promise to do the best job I possibly can, and I have the history that you can go back. People trust my answers. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I do it. I'm so proud of the fact that we now have college classes for what I want to see here. I worked really hard to get that here. I sponsored that, and thank gosh we had a council who supported that. And we got them here. It's one of the best things that's happened to this community. Um, also, I believe that government should be accessible. I'm I return your calls, I'll return your emails, and I'm proud to provide you factual information. And I challenge the spin doctors who won't even want to tell you half the story or a piece of the truth. Vote for me, November 8th. Thank you. Candidate number four, Mr. McPartner, your closing yeah. statement, please. Yes. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for sponsoring this forum. Again, Bob McClellan with Sebastian City Council. Going back to one of the things you said, what motivates me? You know, I was led to a sense of service by my parents, and I love to instill the same sense of service in my children. My three older children, well, one, one for her student council at Sebastian, the other two tried elementary, and they failed the first time. 
but I told him that's great. That didn't make it the first time either. And I see that my modeling, what it does to them, and I'm so proud of what they do. My daughter was here earlier, involved with the Girl Scouts. My other daughter's at church right now, working, doing that. I've devoted my life basically to service. I would consider it a privilege to serve on the Sebastian City Council. I would serve in the best interest of all the citizens. No special interest, anything like that. My job with the Department of Children and Families, I deal with chaotic situations on a daily basis. I come up with problem solving. I work with many different organizations. I'm a collaborator. I'm vested in this community. I mean, I could go on and on. You can call me anytime. Give me 24 hours, I will return any phone call. You can email me, same thing. I will return any email you send to me. I'm as transparent as it comes. What you see is what you get. Vote by my partner for Sebastian City Council. Thank you, Mr. McPartland. Candidate number five, Mr. Gilliams, your closing statement, sir. Thank you very much. I, um, I want to thank the chamber and uh, the people that came out this evening, the people at home that take it and uh, get involved with uh, watching what's going on, and the people online. Um, I've been coming to the meetings for 10 years, and the only time I noticed some of these candidates up here tonight show up is when it's election time. Now, I lost last year when I ran, I came in third place. I never gave up, I came to the next meeting. I'm committed. I don't do it with talk, I do it with deeds. I show up, I do my due diligence, I do my homework, I have the facts, the figures. I put my position, I, I get in front of the camera and I let people know how I feel. I'm not silent. Uh, I, I don't sit in the back and come, you know, once in a blue moon. I don't have an agenda. I'm not looking to run the two or three other people. I want to be an independent where I can weigh out the, the pros and the cons of every important issue and do what's best for the community and launch, not special interest groups such as the Working Waterfront, which is a special interest group. If you want to go check the records, they're very clear. It's a boondoggle. The city manager admitted it twice already that he made mistakes. He made mistakes when he gave away the restaurant equipment that was in there by not putting it out to bid. That's a fact. It's online. You can check it. He made a mistake when he didn't approve the leases. They let the guys down there approve their own leases. That's a fact. So there's no spin doctors here. Uh, just ask yourself a question. Did they have transparency? Why are they afraid to put the city checkbook on the internet? What's there to hide? It's our money. We're entitled to know what's going on. Citizens Academy, they talk about volunteers. I came in front of them numerous times. No Citizens Academy. But yet they talk about volunteers. They fail on economics. Joe Griffin's got zero in the budget for economic development. They don't put their money where their mouth is. It's all talk. Do your homework before you go vote. Vote Damien Gilliams, DamienLovesSebastian.com. And the facts are very clear. The PBA, well, the police endorsed me today, and I'm on it. And the city employees also endorsed me today, and I'm on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Eugene Wolf also endorsed me. I'm sorry. And I'm on it. Thank you. Thank you. Lastly, Mr. Ray, candidate number six. Your closing statement, sir. Uh, again, I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for putting this forum together. I have um, been on city council for two years and just really feel that we've gotten started on moving the city forward on an awful lot of projects. We are improving uh, the 512 corridor. We're working on improving US-1. We are working on improvements to the CRA district. And we have some substantial projects there uh, repairing roads between Indian River Drive and US-1, moving ahead on parking improvements so that we make certain that the boaters and the residents have places to park to enjoy the riverfront. My candidacy is based on the same thing, really, this year as it was two years ago, financial responsibility, economic quality of life, economic growth, which we really need, and preservation of natural resources. We cannot lose sight of the beautiful things that we have here and ignore them in, in, in a growth mode. However, these are compatible uh, issues that we can work together on. You know, what I'd like to take credit for on the council 
but I think my role is to build a consensus. You listen to the public, you listen to the people that come forward, you listen to all of the council members. And while we don't agree at initially on most subjects, by the end of the evening, we've come up with a pretty good solution to the problems that we face. You know, we have uh, a list of candidates here that three of us were endorsed by the newspaper, Andrea Coy, Bob McPartland, and myself. Two people were endorsed by the Realtors Association, Andrea Coy, and myself. I'd like the people, to, when they get to the ballot, it's in alphabetical order, so go to the last name on there, Don Wright, and <laughs> remember, Don Wright is the right choice for Sebastian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. This concludes the final segment of the 2011 Candidates Forum for the Sebastian River Area Chamber of Commerce and its Legislative and Government Affairs Committee. The Chamber and the Committee thank all the candidates for their participation in this forum. I also want to thank the voters, the citizens of the City of Sebastian, for viewing this forum and listening to the issues and positions expressed by all of you, the candidates. For the voters and the citizens of Sebastian, I urge you to carefully and thoughtfully consider each candidate's character and each candidate's position on issues that are important to you before voting for any of the candidates seeking a seat on the City of Sebastian City Council. Please remember that the election will be held November 8, 2011. Thank you and good evening.